What's going on, horror fans? The set in the horror hell. We are back. This We're is Ghoul. I'm Skid Gore. Uh, I just want to say he's sicker than shit right now. You betcha. You'll and my back it. fucking hurts because I just took a digger <laughs> outside. So we are both pretty much. A lot of pain. I'm in physical pain and he is sick. So in immune pain. Hope yeah. you enjoy our misery. Um, this is episode thirty. This is going to be a really cool episode, I think, and I think 30 deserves a cheers, ghoul. Absolutely. Never We're thought we'd be fucking doing 30. Making it further than anybody thought, even us. And this one's going to be a good one, because uh, we're going to be doing one of our favorite extreme horror companies of all time, Unearth Films. So we're going to unearth some great movies for you. And I want to say, we don't have every Unearth release, because that would be a very long horror cast. But I think we got I think we got a really good chunk of the back catalog for you guys to check out. Yes. So I think you're gonna enjoy that. And also at the end, we're gonna have our top twenty five each favorite black metal albums, which I cannot fucking wait for. It's he doesn't extreme. know my list. He doesn't know my list, and it's gonna be fucking fun. So we're fans of extreme horror and extreme metal, so check us out. We shall be back. Cheers, guys. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, six. Alright, thanks for joining us guys on the Unearth Films uh, debut, I guess. I mean, we talked about some other films. Uh, Many and, times in the past. And, and there was an a, actual episode. And so there's a couple that will kind of cross over again. Um, but there's also a lot of new ones. Um, Wonder Earth has been around, what, 10, well, like almost 15 years, 20 years? We didn't years. do our homework, so sorry, Stephen Byro, but we love you, man. Um, but they've been around a long time. I mean, they were putting movies out in 2002, even. I mean, yeah. you know, that's 17 years. So I would say, I would say around about 20. Close enough. Um... So yeah, I'll start off with Red Room. Oh, what a way to start off. Um, a Japanese horror film. Um, basically, a group of people, straight, total strangers, um, kind of get locked in this room and this, you know, woman sets up a challenge of winning $1 million. But what would they do to win $1 million? Um, <laughs> Indeed. Basically torture each other and, you know, all these different tasks. And they got to play this card game. And they got whoever gets... Um, not the skull, but it was like um, it was like an ace or something. I know yeah, they're playing cards. Yeah, it was something different. Like they, it's all scattered about, and mm -hmm. it's it's kind of got this real weird atmosphere. Like they don't really talk to each other because they're strangers, and it's kind of a total red room too. It's like yeah. everything's red. red um, <clears throat> it's got a really cool hair dryer, like torture. Yeah, scene. there's a like, torture with the um, hair dryer that's kind of pulls his shit. nose off, and it's a, it's it's a, it's a brutal movie. It's got a lot of cool cool Japanese gore in it. Yeah, um, it's a good family Definitely movie. check out Red Room. Now it's from 2000... What the hell is that from? Two, three, something like that. 2006. Oh no, this is 99 it came out. Released in 2006. That's what we got to try to get, when the films came out, when they were We're kind of bad at that. We don't really do our homework. We're just kind of... Whatever. We have fun. Kind of wing it. Oh man, this is a good one. Black Sun, The Nanking Massacre. I don't know if anyone's ever seen uh, movies kind of like uh, Behind the Sun, Men Behind the, the Sun, or uh, Philosophy of the Knife, kind of Japanese war crime type stuff. Um, definitely a true story, you know, like very um, treating Chinese like shit and just torturing them during uh, World War Two. Very real, very real. There's, oh, a, yeah. there's a scene where this dude has this uh, bayonet on the end of his machine gun and he rips his fetus out of a woman and just holds it up above her and just like laughs demonically. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is not for everybody, but man, for the fans of Extreme, definitely check out uh, Black Sun, The Naked Massacre. Uh, kind of more done in a documentary style, but man, this is a really good movie. It's from 1995. Check it out. Oh, yeah. What you got? Uh, Frank Montag's Slasher. Um, this is pretty much just basically your... Kind of cut of the middle slasher film, lots of gore, obviously. Yeah. Um, people, these kids go up to a weekend, you know, getaway. Kind of a Friday the Thirteenth, to very, uh, very Friday the Thirteenth style. That's what I got when I first um, watched it. And then this kind of masked stranger arrives, and well, as you know, shit doesn't go right when a slasher. It's stranger got a backstory too, but you know, I'd be giving it away, so you gotta Definitely watch it. I don't want to give that up. So check out Slasher. This is from two thousand seven. So. Relatively new, over 10 years, but yeah. 
Definitely check out the Slasher. That's when I first saw control. that movie, you know, yeah, I had the Friday the 13th vibe, and I kind of thought, all right, you know, this is just another, you know, hack em, slash em type thing. But really, when you watch it yeah. all the way through, you kind of like it a lot. It's it's definitely well done. Um, acting's good in it. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was well done. For 2016, we have the second film in the infamous American guinea pig series called Bloodshock. Oof. Yeah, man, this one... It's a slow burn, for sure. Um, yeah, and it's shot in black and white until, you know, I'm not going to give that away, but... I'm we, sure most of you, if you're watching... Yeah, you've probably seen, it, but, seen this film already, so you um, know that the gore sequences are in blood-red color. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're tearing their stitches out, and they're having, oh. you know... And it, it's a lovely it's, it's a sex. Weird, it's, a, it's a weird love story, kind of. Yeah. Very yes. twisted. We did talk about this one, of course, beforehand. Oh, yeah, but, uh, we, yeah we did. But uh, definitely about experiments in a mental institution, about, yeah. and it, it, it really it pays off in the end. It's definitely something to pay, you know, wait until the end. Uh, one of those Directed kind of by films. Marcus Cook. Check it out. Blood Shack. Special effects guru. Yes. Um, das <laughs> or Brutal Duel. Oh, nice um, one. The infamous. German, still I think banned up to this point. Um, I know it was uh, banned in like 2007 um, for like over the top. Oh, that's gore. over the top. Right. Acting, it's big, yeah, big it's, acting. Yeah, it's um, lots of cool like gores, a chainsaw to the head, and I mean all sorts of just over the top. It's anything it's you very, can think could be done to the human body. It's very right? like uh, Tokyo Gore Police. Yeah, I'm um, thinking that realm. Very, Except it's not CG; it's all practical. Right. Which it's all really practical weird. effects. Um, they really do a great job of selling this movie. Um, the gore definitely there, but again, the acting not so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is they call this the kind of film you get together with friends, cheers you know, some beers, get some beers, and fucking just watch hang the out red and watch. Shit fly, man. Pretty much, it's pretty much all you get out of this one. It's a lot of fun, though. <laughs> so definitely check out uh, Das Kammer Brutal Duel. Yes. Good old props German on, props on uh, pronouncing that, Gould. I German was, splatter. I was there you go. Up. I remember that scene where the dude takes a knife and takes the fetus out of the woman. So this thing about fetuses. <laughs> Other <laughs> films don't fuck around. No, dude. no, they yeah, do not. They, they find know, the goriest uh, stuff out there. So this is actually a really newer Unearthed Films release, but it's from 1988. It's one of my favorite movies. That I'm glad Stephen Byro fucking gave this movie the justice it deserves because. I mean, you even have it on VHS. I have it on VHS, yeah. and it took forever for it to get on DVD and Blu-ray. It and just I, came out, actually, fairly yeah, recently. I just so. got it. It's the last movie. <laughs> when I yeah. have money, this, this is the last movie. This was a big release by them, so it is. you probably still get it. H.P. Lovecraft's The Unnamable. Ooh, such a good... Dead cover. It's just oh. so nostalgic. Remember going to the video store and oh, yeah. that? Like, can oh, I rent this? No! Now there's demons in it. There's yeah. creatures, yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is just an excellent film. I just absolutely love this film. Uh, the acting is questionable, you know, the cheesy 80s acting, but of course. I love the 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 um, the camaraderie between Carter and um, Howard. Yeah. You can tell that they're best friends, and they actually really are best friends in life, and it's really cool when you watch the behind-the-scenes shit on here. They have, like, interviews with the cast today. You know, that was, like, 20, 25 years ago when they made yeah. this film, and they're all still friends, and they're all close. Oh, yeah. It's really cool to hear the commentary. When you watch it with the commentary, you learn a lot. So now we're waiting for Unnameable 2. Yeah, and I know they had a DVD release. Yeah. I did have a DVD release. Unable 2 is actually good too, but that's yeah. another episode, but still. Right. <laughs> but on Earth, you're paying attention. Yeah, but, right the, there. but the Unnameable <laughs> is great, man. If you're a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft, which we both are, it's got oh, a lot yes. of good atmosphere with the with the shunned house, with the house, um, the face at the window type stuff. Mm -hmm. Turns out to be this demon. Excellent film. I love oh, it. Unnameable. I'm so fucking happy great that release they released this. Thank you, Stephen Byer, if you're watching. I doubt you ever thank you. All right, we're moving into the aspect of clowns. Marcus Cook's A Hundred Tears. Uh, this movie. this movie, Gertie the Clown. I mean, we talked <laughs> about this in our clown episode. Yeah, we talked about that um, in the Set in Horror episode two. Oh, in the, in the gore forever. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, what do you get when you get an oversized clown that walks around with a meat cleaver the size of Texas yeah. and wants to wreak havoc on people? Oh, um, yeah. Of course, one of our very early kill scenes for Descent to Horror Hell was oh, the decapitation yeah. of the right. real chair guy could not push off the stairs. This was actually, this made our list, of course, of Goria's films. Oh, right, flu so. Um Definitely check out Gertie's Hundred Tears, and apparently there's a second one maybe in the works that was kind of brought up quite a while back. I heard um, it was happening, and I heard it wasn't happening. Yeah, Two Hundred Tears, so we're really hoping you guys... Uh, put that out because really yeah. would love to see that. I know you guys are super busy, but you know. I'd love to see Gertie again, man. Packing people oh, up with that larger so than life meat cleaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like one of the ones you buy at Dollar Tree. Yeah. <laughs> like oversized plastic pieces. Yeah, yeah. totally. 
Uh, the second film, oh my goodness. The second film of Lucifer Valentine's Oof. Vomit Gore Trilogy, my personal favorite too, Regurgitated Sacrifice yes. with the Soska Sisters. Oh, hell yeah. Labeled here as the Black Angels of Hell, <laughs> they are so fucking hot. Um, yeah, man, this is the second film in the series. Now, um, a lot of people can talk shit about Lucifer Valentine, but I really like when somebody puts their money where their mouth is, where mm. they create art. Yep. It's sick, but it's art nonetheless. That's what you gotta get over. The that's visuals, it's, it's, it's the camera work, Hank's skinny fucking puking. To me, that's talent, man. And I really think this series is awesome. And the series is a story. I mean, it all it makes is. sense. They all collaborate yep. to one story, which is... A lot of it has to do with Kurt Cobain as well, the suicide. Yep. There's a lot going on in these films. Uh, you can just watch them for the gore, obviously. That's what you watch them right. for. But really, there is a story. His films are kind of hard to follow because a lot there's not a lot of... Uh, di uh, dialogue. Dialogue. Yeah, a lot really of it's weird isn't. noises and... You know, sometimes yeah. I didn't understand what the hell was going on, but actually it took time to watch it with commentary, and I developed a more respect for his films from that. Like, he was explaining everything, and it just made sense. So maybe that's what you got to do to check out the Vomit Gore trilogy, but we're going oh, to say Badass. And you know damn well that's not the first one on this list. <laughs> no, <there's laughs> um, Next, we're moving on to Brian Paulin's Bone Sickness. Yeah! Um, one of our favorite Descent Oil. One of, the, one of the most underrated, I think zombie films out there to date um definitely doesn't get its 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 due um this was kind of a movie that when did it come out in 2000 2006 i think five, 2004 no, four, four. Four, yeah, yeah. morbid visions originally put this out and you can also get that version Google it's, has not, a, it's not a print but Google has it um but yeah i mean this is kind of like the you know, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff in this. It's oh, favorite. it's an it's, art, man. It's so good. They never run out of blood. No, they don't. Uh, if, you ever, if you've seen Brian Paulin's films, uh, Fetus, um, I'm trying to think here, um, what are some other ones? Putting me on the spot here, ghoul. <laughs> I mean, we got Fetus. I mean, if you've ever seen a Brian Paulin movie, Septic, um, things like that. Cryptoplasm. Cryptoplasm. I mean, these movies are over the top. They take so long because, man, it it's sleep. one guy that does this for a living if you like zombie movies and you like them done right i like the car explosion you know and it's i mean it's Rich george eating real worms yeah dude that was actually and puking scene. real worms in in real life he actually did that and you watch behind the scenes you can watch it too it's pretty, <laughs> it's it's pretty pleasant it's pretty pleasant <laughs> definitely check out bone sickness guys if you like zombie movies definitely done well hail brian paul just when you think zombie movies are so cliche and blah 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 you the see something like that through. the underground's where it's at man oh well, yeah Oh boy, here we go. We knew the guinea pig was coming. <laughs> the mermaid, authentic guinea pig. Mermaid in a manhole, and he never dies. No, I'm mostly for mermaid in a manhole. He never dies. It's just kind of yeah, a boring. Stupid it's boring. Movie. But mermaid in a manhole is a great film. Really disgusting <laughs> film about a dude oh, that yeah. finds this mermaid in the manhole. <laughs> in a manhole. Yeah, in the sewers. It takes him, takes her back to uh, get her back to health and paint her, and uses painting of her decayed body as colors for his canvas. You thought Color Me Blood Red was about that? Man, come on. <laughs> this is really Different good. era. Excellent. Yeah. Um, you really feel for the character as well. Uh, these guinea pig films were just made for gore hounds, diehard gore hounds, like mm. Chaz Ballin. And as most Japanese films on. are for some reason. They almost, they're not made for much of a story. I mean, there is, but it's it's the, let the blood fly, man. Mermaid in a Manhole. Check it out. You've never seen this one. What's we got? I have... Visceral, between the ropes of madness. Oh, that's the boxing one. Um, yeah, it's a boxer, kind of like his career, kind of goes downhill, and uh, he kind of finds that like his no purpose in life anymore, and he ends up capturing these people and just kind of beats the fuck out of her. I mean, shit. Um, you and kid. But he basically just takes all his frustrations and all of his like his mental torture and anguish out on these women, and well, beats them basically to a bloody pulp. Yep. Um, he's a very deranged individual. Got hit in the head way too many times. Yeah, and he's got this. And the whole, like, uh, between the ropes kind of is a, a double meaning. I mean, you think as a boxer, you know, between the ropes. But he's, he also ties people up in, like, ropes, like, bound and gay, kind of like a yeah. S and m kind of thing. Um, definitely a weird movie. Um, you kind of got to pay attention to it to really understand what's going on. It's very kind of set back, but... Definitely check out Unearthed Release from Visceral. Yeah, if you're um, a fan of extreme shit, that was well worth your love. Oh, yeah. 
It's very, it's very real. It gets you in the psyche of somebody yeah. who has gone through a lot of shit. Yeah. So. And his, um, you know, his parents, his own parents disown him, and yeah. he can't find his <clears throat> rightful place in life. <clears throat> so he turns to that. You mm -hmm. know, total downward it's, it's, spiral. It's a screwed up thing, man. Descends into <laughs> hell, literally. Yeah. Um, Copyright. God damn it, Google! How the fuck do you say this? Harakiri. Harakiri. We'll go I with think. that. think. Okay, yeah. we'll go with that. This is a weird one. This is a really weird one. This is a collection <laughs> of really weird ones. Um, yeah. It's basically a fetish series where the, these really hot Japanese chicks stick knives and swords into them and mutilate them, mutil yeah. mutilate themselves and eventually die in front of a camera. You know, that's what I got out of it at least. There was one disc that didn't play on my DVD player which sucks. I think Beautiful Swords Woman. But I saw a schoolgirl, female Haikyuria. I saw some of those, and that was pretty much basically the same storyline as just a mutilation fetish, I guess. More just or less. Cutting, yeah. cutting, just cutters. You know, there's cutters. Mm -hmm. That's basically what this is, except they actually go through with it and they kill themselves <laughs> on camera. Yeah, it's... This one's out there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, check that one out. All right, we're moving on to the, to the first installment of the Slaughter Vomit Dolls. Um, Slaughter of Vomit Dolls. Um, Start Amira up. LeVay plays Rest in peace. A, yeah. Um, for Angela. Um, she basically is kind of abused by her parents and things like that. And she kind of goes deep into this thing of, like, sex. And she's molested by a priest. And, I mean, it gets really dark and deep into things. Um, but she kind of sold the suit. Yeah, more or less. Like this is the one that really I think people remember a lot of, because of just how gritty it is and the feel of it. Yeah. Um, because she really does go through a whole lot of just unbelievable acts, and um, she's a very good actress too. She really sells it. Oh yeah, and then she kind of realizes at some point that like there's no there's no good and there's no evil there's nothing like there's nothing left so she literally hits rock bottom in this movie um and you have the vomit gore with hank skinny puking all over the place <laughs> that's what these are known for yeah. man i mean that's why they're called vomit i mean there's no lucifer valentine created his own genre of horror called gore vomit and yep. i applaud him for that it's not for everybody but hey man it gets a lot of he... cred now i think on earth films releasing this finally um, either you got the four disc version or you got them individually throughout the years. Um, thank you, Unearth Films, for putting these out because I think Lucifer Valentine's work really needs to be out there for people to see as an art. Absolutely. So Couldn't have said it better. Um, Philosophy of a Knife. This is a big, long, fucking... Very long movie. Documentary-style oh, film. It's done very well. It's done too well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of the whole... Um, what are they called? The... Unit 731, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a, like uh, Men Behind the Sun I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, Japanese war crimes using uh, people as guinea pigs, basically, for uh, torture experiments and uh, chemicals. Anthrax, I believe, uh, huffing to see how long they last, you know, type, that type oh, of yeah. shit. Definitely evisceration, surgical stuff. This is really done well. Um, like I said, it's more of a documentary, and you got to have some time to watch this, Jack, because this fucking movie is 249 minutes, and it's shot in black and white with a couple color thrown in. But uh, It fits. I mean, Yeah, it, it really works. was done well, yeah, Philosophy definitely. of a Knife. I guess this is getting another release, which is cool. I think this one's That's, out of print. I that one is out of print, yes. Um, but this is a really, really cool film if you want to know more about the war crimes of Japan, definitely. Philosophy of a Knife. All right, we're going to take a small break here. And we're, we're going to do gonna... something different here. Instead of giving you a kill, we're going to give you an unearthed film trailer. There you guys go. So take it away. Sure. Cheers. Do we believe in hell? This isn't normal. You'll still get what you want. Sorry you have to go away. Oh, how we wish that you could stay. We're going to 
going to miss your smiling face. And we wish you days filled with love and grace. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, trailer. If you guys like what we're showing you, you know, definitely check out Unearthed Films. Um, check out their website, check out their Facebook page. A um, lot of cool interaction with a lot of cool people. Um, and course. definitely go to Unearthed Films, check them out, you know, go buy some of these movies. You know, they got sales going on. Um, support the underground. Absolutely. So, uh, without further ado, let's continue this. Um, <laughs> we're going off with their latest uh, feature, oh. Sacrifice. Oh, yeah, um, looking awesome. This kind of came out in coordinates with um, oh, Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. And came out after that. And this was kind of a real, it's a pretty simple storyline. Um, Daniel basically goes through this whole, uh, I don't know, body change. Um, He's depressed because of the death of his father. He loses a lot of things. Um, a lot of emotional scars, things like that. Yeah. And he ends up uh, trying to redeem himself by basically sacrificing himself to Ishtar, which if you remember is like a blood feast homage. <laughs> um, True. <laughs> but it just, it gets so graphic and so detailed. Again, yeah. it's, I wouldn't say it's a slow burner because he really does. No, it starts right away. It, it does start right away, but I think it gets more extreme as you watch yeah, it. Um, Especially when he's up with his penis. And yeah, I mean, really, when it, when it gets going, it gets going. It's like a snowball down a hill, man. It just it gains momentum stops. and it goes. Um, I remember we got together and watched that for the first <laughs> time, and we're just we're kind of like, "Holy shit!" That eyeball port, you know, uh, it looks so real. Yeah, and they did a really good job on this one. Um, Poison Rogue um, did this movie um, with this release. You know, deleted scenes, things like that. So you get a lot of cool stuff. Um, <laughs> what is that behind the scenes of the weenie? There you go. That's what you need to know. So definitely check out Sacrifice from American Guinea Pig. This is also off on our film. So. That's a really good one. That one's uh, for the family for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really like this one called Francesca. Now, um, we're huge fans of Jallos, Italian Jallos, and this is one of the best modern Jallos. Oh, it's a throwback too. Yeah, and, it's and, a total and, throwback. Yes. You would think this was filmed like right around like Bird with the Crystal Plumage or uh -huh. Don't Torture a Duckling or, you know, whatever. Something from the 70s, it's definitely. A, it's a Euro 70s style, yeah. yeah very it's much done so. so well. The way it's filmed, the camera work, the soundtrack. sets. The, oh, the soundtrack is like a total Goblin knockout, you know? It's great. It's like the it's Goblin lovely. soundtrack Goblin never made. <laughs> and it comes with that, too, which yep. is really cool. If you get this pack, you get the Blu-ray, the DVD, the CD, yep. all in one, man. This is a really cool pack. Definitely highly recommend this one. If you're a fan of Giallo films, Italian horror cinema in general, Absolutely. you're just going to trip out on this, man. I just loved it the first time I saw it. Definitely had like a deep red meets like phenomena type mm -hmm. vibe to it. You oh, know? absolutely. Excellent film. Love the cover to that, too. Yeah, dude. This got the covers off. That's the Blu-ray cover, Blu cover, yeah. cover is really cool, it's too. It's just the face, more or less. Yeah, like a I kind of like this yeah. one, though, because you get the gore. Yeah. kind of reminds me a bit like a Suspirio with the blood. Or a Grindhouse, it. even. Yeah. It's got a Grindhouse kind of feel, but... That's just check it out. Kicks ass. Check it out. Now we're going to a really messed up one, Where the Dead Go to Die. <laughs> oh, fuck. And this, that's a trip. This this is a movie that... And I, and I can't say this enough is not for everybody. This is... This has got things, because it's animated, so I think animation takes a whole different level as far as what you can do. That's what my attitude was till Ghoul told me about that. Because one. there's things that I, I couldn't figure out, like I, I saw it was animated and all weird, and I figured, well, how could this be, like, gory? It's There's gore to it, but I think it's more or less the mental... Oh, we got a guest. Oh, <laughs> we got our little hell mascot. We got, we got our little uh, buddy apparently hanging out. Hello! <laughs> Other films. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, this is kind of, it's three stories. Um, basically, Labby, who's this dog, kind of takes all these different forms and basically takes on... Creepy voice. Ugh. And takes on troubled children from the block and deals with all these different things. And I mean, it's it gets messed up. Yeah. So, if take my word for it. Take our word for it. Ghoul, put it this way. I was putting off that movie for the longest time. The ghoul said, you've got to so check this I. movie out. <laughs> <laughs> and he let me borrow it, and I just watched it for the show for the first time, man. And holy shit, like, yeah, there were some scenes in that movie that you could just never get away with, like, with if it was real, real life. Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah, um, it yeah, just, it, it's a fucking it's a, it's the a, dog, fucking sucking the dog. 
Yeah, the dog yeah. eating out the dead mother. It's yeah. Yeah, when you when you see it, let me tell you, it's it's something else. That's Be prepared awesome. for that. That's an awesome so. movie. Here's another cool movie. Uh, both myself and Gula are really fans of Ryan Nicholson as well. Oh, absolutely. And this is his Unearthed Films, Collar. This is a really fun one. I enjoyed this one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> lost our mayhem background. <laughs> oh, you, whatever. You can't. They're like they're like kids. You just yeah. can't keep them down, right? Whatever. Love dogs. <laughs> whatever. Uh, Collar kicks ass, man. Really kind of a story about urban cannibalism. Ooh. Ryan Nicholson himself, like in all his films, makes cameo in this. Yep. Uh, really enjoyed this one. Uh, this is there's a different cover to get. You can get like it's, more nudity cover. They're, they're this totally was the only one I could yeah. find at the time, so give me a break. I got the man. poster of that, but oh yeah, yeah that's right. Collar chewed up. All right, uh, Tom Hindenburg's German uh, necrophilic passion. Um, this movie is it's it's basically kind of like necromantic, Young know, Butcher Guide. Um, yeah. It's kind of the same. It's really the same aspect. Um, a guy who's kind of in this abusive relationship finds this dead girl in the woods, <laughs> and instead of like turning her over to the police, he takes her home and he has his way with her. Um, passion. What's your passion? But it's 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 weird because it kind of turns into a weird love triangle kind of thing. Um, but definitely, the corpse is very oh, well realistic. done. Very realistic. It's and I said it's like necromantic, very slimy, mm -hmm. and just. Um, it's a short movie. I mean, it's only like an hour. Yeah. Or 52 sure. minutes. I mean, it's a, it's a short movie, um, but I think it encompasses a lot in 52 minutes. So definitely. if you like the necrophilia films, that's definitely a check one out. Necrophilic Passion. Absolutely. Oh, boy. Here we go. Speaking of necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Natural yeah. Sendries, Infamous, Aftermath, oh. and Genesis. Yeah. Now, we've been talking about this movie for fucking God knows however, if you ever watch our old episodes. Yes. Rightfully so, man. This is right up there. I was just waiting for the day we didn't unearth films to talk more about this one that uh -huh. we haven't said already. But what really, what can't you say? I mean, there's images in this movie that you just can't believe, like when he, you know, literally fucked with a knife, you know? This that was, happens. And this was 94. Gets up on the operating yeah. table and fucks her and shit. And yeah. Then he, feeds her heart to his dog. And <laughs> yep. Then there's Genesis, which is like a really depressing movie about this sculpture, this guy that makes a sculpture of his wife. Yep. Who passed away and she just starts bleeding bleeding yeah. and uh then he starts deteriorating himself and rotting uh, away and very depressing very well stuff. made movie i mean 94 i think that came out originally uh aftermath is 94 yeah, 94 genesis was 96 i believe right after that yeah but this yeah, is a really good series banned for a lot of years very hard to find the gore cover alone is when he's not this one but he's dissecting yeah. like the dead the naked dead body yeah that's the cool cover to get. Um, these are all short films, yep. um, but they do more in, uh, let's see, it doesn't really say how long each one is, but I know they're shorter, yeah. but it does more than a full length, really. It just gets right to the point. Right. There's no character bi building, really. I mean, there is. There's no dialogue enough. whatsoever. No. It's just beautiful symphonic music. And it doesn't need to be. I mean, no. A movie like that Beautifully shot. Be. The shots alone are just fucking Academy oh. Award winning, I think. They're killer. Yeah. Nacho Shinji, awesome. After that. Oh boy. Um, Lex Ortega. How do we. Um, oh, is that a Traz? A Traz. <laughs> How do we okay. categorize this movie? Um, it's basically. Don't go to guy, Mexico, it's what I say. Yeah, it, it, it's about two serial killers who are caught um, after a film that they shoot is found. Very and Brutal film. Um, they, style. Very much so, and it it's this really badass like looking guy, you know, real tough mafia style of Mexico, <laughs> and this cop who's a kind of a dick, and he kind of forces him to relive his crimes <clears throat> and his childhood and things like that. And I mean, they get into yeah. some really weird things because if you read up on serial killers and you read about wetting the bed or you know sexual abuse Setting and fires all and this torturing stuff like, animals that's what this deals with and this goes into his childhood why he became the way he did and in a very graphic way i mean it's it's very done well oh absolutely it's it's really kind of cool i was sold when i saw it that's for sure definitely a tries check that one out yeah. get the three disc uh, yeah, yeah. if you can i know they make a single disc as well but on earth films does have i think the three disc still available. yeah that's the one right there um but i think this is not available and also the know, um, um the soundtrack alone is absolutely oh, so amazing cool. like it's it's a great soundtrack it's worth it mm -hmm. for sure a is amazing great mexican film yeah 
Matthew Garrett's Morse County. Now, um, <laughs> this is fun. This is <laughs> this is not a movie you watch if uh, you're. You're very depressed, okay? Because you're gonna yeah. be ten times more depressed after you're done watching this. Yes, film. and all three, and it's a, sh it's yeah. an anthology more. It's or an less, anthology yeah. film, very depressing. The only thing I could kind of compare it to would probably be like, um, maybe Trilogy of America, something like that, mm. where it's you like these short shorts in there that are just very depressing, very graphic. Um, yeah. The one that got me, though, is the Elmer and Iris one. That's sad. You know, it's very, very sad, because we're all going to get old. We're all going to start losing it up here, you know. I'm already starting. But... So am I. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's bound to happen, yeah. you know. And, and uh, the sense of loneliness, um, being with the person that you love all your life, and then they years. die in front of you. And I think what made you... it even worse is... She lost, she lost her, her job. job. She and lost her job that she loves. She yeah. has nothing to do. Because technology took over. See, this is a very real film because it makes sense. Yep. People are lo people lose jobs because technology, they can't keep up with the, the advancements. Computer systems. Exactly what happened to Iris, and it's really sad. Yeah, and she just kind of goes into a downward spiral, and Elmer has a stroke while he's watching his favorite TV program, and then she comes downstairs, and he's still, like, watching the TV. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, man... <laughs> It's, you know, you don't want to laugh, but it is kind of funny in a way. It does have kind of comedic width because, yeah, you know, just, she's spraying she's like no Febreze idea. around she him. He's, rotten, he's got maggots crawling on him and shit, you know. She's, oh, but the, the yeah. thing, the, the one I like, though, is the the dad and the family. Like he, oh, the homosexual. She cheats on, Jewish on him and he's a yeah. drunk. And, yeah. and he, I mean, literally, he just goes and kills his family. And I'm not yeah. going to give too much away. We you just did already. <laughs> Check out Morris County, guys. Yeah, this is highly recommended. Absolutely. Played Sentinel Oil. Definitely. Now, we did a... We're not going to talk too much about this one. We did an episode, uh, Recent Watches, on Song of Solomon. Um, Stephen Byer. One of the... And Marcus Cook. Um, Jeremiah Cruz from August Underground Films. Um, Jessica Cameron plays yeah. an amazing demon in this movie. Hands um, down, first round knockout. It gets, it gets shit, but you know what? Fuck you, because this movie is one of the best possession films. It beats all that Ouija crap and all that other Bally bullshit. This is the real deal, man. This is if you want gore, if you want great acting. Um, definitely check out Song of Solomon. That one really impressed both of us. Oh, so absolutely. much that we did a half I mean, ass Gene review, in so there. And check out our half ass reviews from Elf if you want more in depth there you on go. it. And yes, we fucked up on that. We know about that. We got some names mixed up. It happens. Yeah, that's right, we did. It happens. <laughs> I think alcohol had a little bit to do with that, but hey, little whatever. Bit. We're not experts, we're just idiots. We're having fun. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Phil Stevens' long... Not Phil Stevens' long, but his movie. <laughs> his long. <laughs> uh, great, uh, shot in black and white. Um, oh, I'm sure Flowers it. will be coming up at some point. Yeah. What is this, a sequel to Flowers, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, Flowers is the first. Yeah, so... Just very disturbing imagery, very well done, very well shot, very well acted. Yeah, it um, is. Steve, Steve is amazing. He's he really make, cool he makes he makes black and white make you want to take a shower, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, usually you see color and you see dirt and you just see all this, and you see it. Yeah. But when it's in black and white, the way it's done and the way it's shot makes you just feel dirty yes. inside. It's it's really done well. I couldn't have said it better. Very nice. Um. Yeah, Lung, check it out. You got flowers coming up at some. And point. also, not released, but Lung Two is in works right now. If you Lung guys Two follow. is on here, I believe. No, Lung Two is actually getting made. Yeah, Lung Two. Oh, is it? Yeah, you get Lung and Lung Two on here. It's a double disc. See? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I know he's working on something else. I can't remember what the name of it is. Off More power to him. He's a fucking Sorry, badass but, director. Uh, all right, moving on to a movie called <laughs> Hunting Creatures. Um, <laughs> I did not care for that movie. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's something else. Um, it's kind of a, it's a zombie film. Um, this chemical kind of gets out in this chemical plant, and people start turning into zombies. I mean, it, it's a run of the mill thing. It's got some cool gore to it, but yeah, it cheesy as shit. I, I like. like I actually have it. more respect for the film after watching the making of because you know yeah. it's all practical effects. It's an art. Which is what what art films I think really gets behind. Yes, is practical effects. They like the films Absolutely. that. It, yes, it turns your stomach, but it's also an art. It's something that you don't get behind a computer and do unless absolutely necessary. But absolutely, like where the dead go to die, of course. Madness of many. This one's right up there with some of their best releases for sure. It's a creepy movie. Yeah, it's a very 
I'm not going to use the word torture porn because I hate that fucking term myself. It's overused. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of torture in this movie. This poor girl goes through, and she just lives right to the end. There you go. Excellent film. All right, we're going to take you to another uh, trailer here. So uh, come back, guys. Cheers. Check all these films out, guys. Seriously, check this company out. They're one of my personal favorites, one of Google's favorites. Extreme companies that are putting out quality fucking horror films. They're bringing movies that are overseas and stuff that most people don't get to see. And even if there, even absolutely. if there are some, you know, U.S. films, they're fucking. Great. The releases are good because they they're give you a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of special features. So they care about their product. They care about their fans. Stephen Byron. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Thank you. All right. Frank and Leathers, Frank and Hooker, one of my personal <laughs> favorite releases. It's a classic movie, man. Yeah, man, this really is a classic. Even yeah. Zachary is in there, or host. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he plays a weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is so fucking cool. I have to do a half-ass reviews on this at some point. From 1990. Yeah. Um, God, I forgot the actor's name. He's also in... That's, um... He's also in uh, Street Trash. What the hell's his name? It's Frank something. God, I totally forgot. Doesn't even say it on here. Yeah. I know it's Jeffrey. Jeffrey Franken. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Great film. <laughs> Want a date. Classic horror line. Um, basically, this guy's girlfriend. Sing, I think soon to be wife. I think they were engaged, yeah, 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 actually. Yeah, I gets, so. Has a, it's been a while since I've seen accident movie, with a fucking lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much gets chopped to shit by a lawnmower. And then pieces of her body are missing, and this guy's a scientist, and he's trying to bring. He's trying to do like these obscure science experiments. It's a Dr. Frankenstein story. Pretty much, yeah. Frankenhooker, you know. Hence the title. Yeah. It's kind of like a modern day Dr. Frankenstein tries to put his girlfriend back together, tries to find the perfect parts, and of course, you know what happens then. You know, he tries to find all these hookers, and yeah. shit just kind of gets crazy. And then when she actually does come back, that's a payoff. You know, I think Sleepaway Camp has a really good, uh, you know, payoff at the end. This one's right up there with oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I love that one. Frankenhooker. Yeah. That's a good one. Classic. All right, the well, more or less the last of the trilogy. Um, Lucifer Valentine, slow torture, slow torture, puke chamber. That's a mouthful. Um, basically, this is kind of Angela makes her pact with Satan. She makes good with it, um, and she is descended down into hell. And her whole objective is to find a new Angela um, to kind of go through this. Um, More sk Frank Skinny puking. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it is. I mean, she just, you know, finds the new Angela, and it's kind of the same. Those kind films of shit, are so. art. Don't listen to anybody. Yeah. You know, it takes art so. to do what Lucifer Valentine does. Absolutely. I hope he makes more, too. Evil Dead Trap 2. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember this one at all. Uh, it, was, it was so. F I remember I was so fucked up one night, and I tried watching this as 102 minutes. <laughs> All subtitles, and yeah. I'm sorry. I just I seen the first Evil Dead trap. That one I actually didn't mind, but I've under films throw an Evil one. Dead trap too, and has nothing to do with Sam Raimi's Evil Dead. <laughs> no, but uh, it's really good uh, Asian splatter. Of course. Sorry. So I can't get it. You guys will have to get that one. I'll it's have to rewatch it. Uh, moving on to a movie called Sheepskin. This is from 2013. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Uh, werewolf movie, actually. We did talk yeah. about this on our werewolf episode. Yes, we did. Um, it's a it's a weird take on a on the genre of werewolves. Yeah, um, it really is. Definitely it's works. It's got a cool punk rock band, though, that I remember. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, Curtis Spiler. Spiler? Yeah, here, we'll go with that. Put this one out. Um... 
it, it's it's kind of like it really leaves you guessing um, yep. as to is it a werewolf or what is it you know. So, um, pretty much who did it? Yeah, it's like who done it? Who but, killed his sister? Who's yeah. gonna pay for it? Um, definitely a cool film to check out. It it it's got awesome. Album, like not album cover, uh, DVD cover. I'll work for that. It's also got really good all practical effects oh, as absolutely. well. Absolutely, really that creature was cool. Yeah, it really drew me to it. Um, mm. Kind of like a is he is he in he? And when you find out, it's pretty much too late. Yep. Kind of story, and it's yep. comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> pretty cool. much. Yeah. Excellent film. Oh fuck! I really want to say this director's name because he really deserves it because I love this product. I'm going to try it. Frank Coas Yag Palans Right. We're going with that. Femme Mort Trilogy. I fucking love this. This was such an eye-opener for me when I saw it. I had no idea what the hell to expect. This movie is like a simulated acid gore trip is the best way to describe it. This food, yeah. all this rotting food coming to life and chasing this guy around and Blood, mucus, maggots, yogurts, uh, <laughs> strawberries, I mean, you know, all kinds yeah. of foods. Just it's disgusting films. I love them. They were actually amazing. I really hope this guy puts out more product because I really enjoy his work. Check out Femme de More Trilogy. Highly recommended. Bon appetit. Uh, next up is American, or not American guinea pig, the original guinea pig, um, Devil's Experiment, Android of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, yeah. whatever. Um, it's a double feature, kind of falls into one movie. Um, basically, the scientist's daughter, or sister, sorry, um, is kind of falling under this, like, slowly killing disease. Um, so he kind of, like, answers, what is he, he needs... Which is funny, he needs a guinea pig. Yeah. To basically kind of... It's kind of a reanimator. Make, yeah, make her kind of survive. Um, and then the second one, obviously, he creates this android of Notre Dame. Um, it's, a, it's a weird movie. Um, it's kind of got a, a real... It's kind of got a reanimator vibe, vibe too. It came around at the same time. Like those sci-fi kind of movies. Yeah. Um, it's kind of got that, too. A little um, black humor. Yeah. It's, it's that first one, no devil's experiment, though, man. Like it's that's, a, that's a cool that's movie. one of the most yes. disturbing snuff films you'll ever see. So. Absolutely, definitely check out Devil's Experiment and Android. Of There's an Man. eyeball fucking scene in Devil's Experiment. Oh, it just cuts that out. It's like it just gets uh, me to this day when that needle goes through and just pokes yeah. right through. I believe it was a real pig's eye or a sheep's eye or something. Wouldn't surprise me. Really cool. Revenge is her middle name. I actually really enjoyed this one as well. That was a fun one. This was a really good vigilante type film. Um, a little gory like too. A miss shit. Very violent. It says Miss 45 meets Fight for Your Life. That's kind of the best way to describe it as well. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. This chick that just, you know, she's, um, she's a druggie. You know, she's a hooker. Trying to make ends meet, trying to make money, you know. Then she unexpectedly is expecting. And uh, her shit boyfriend who's stuck on the same shit. You know, he's got to be a man and be a father or whatnot, yeah, you know, right. and basically she just takes revenge on uh, the, the the hoodlums that fucking raped her and got her pregnant. Yep. She just had enough. It's one very, bullet, a, one knife. It's a very violent at a time. movie. It's a very sure. violent movie. Yes. Um, the actress, Lisa Brennan, Brennan, is actually pretty good. I didn't mind her. She's pretty believable. You kind of felt her pain, especially when they were sticking it in her, for sure. Yeah. Revenge is her middle name. Also, I want to say real quick, um, Jeremiah Cruz did the effects on this film from Toast Eggs. And also, he stars in this film and gets his dick ripped off in the beginning. <laughs> so, Jeremiah, hail. Cheers. Uh, next, we got Cannibal by oh, Barry and Dora. Uh, <laughs> this movie basically follows a guy who uh, he has a lifelong cannibalistic obsession with yeah. wanting to eat somebody. <laughs> And this, goes, of you. and this goes unfulfilled for so long, and he decides to go on the web and post an ad for it. And some guy with a very miserable life, doesn't want to live anymore, answers that ad. Must work at Walmart. Um, <laughs> uh, based on a true story, um, and actually this actual, well, most of it actually happened. Um, I believe it's based on a true case. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's got, they kind of fall into this romantic relationship when they meet each other. 
Um, so there is one of those scenes where, you know, obviously we talk about lesbians. Brilliant. Um, but when you talk about obs very extreme films like this, you're also getting into the other side of things. Um, so it's a very uncomfortable movie for some people um, because of the content of it. It's a very graphic movie. It's a movie if you have an open mind about all sexuality. Yeah, it, it kind of makes you wonder, like, how fucked in the head am I <laughs> watching this? Um, but he makes him eat his own member, which is <laughs> all you need to know. So but definitely it, check. If you can hunt down Cannibal, it's out of print. How do you like your dick? Regular or extra crispy? <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's an out-of-print movie. I know Unearth does not carry it anymore, but you can still find it on other outlets. I think I so. got that on eBay years ago. Yeah. Good. But you get lucky enough to find it, definitely pick it up for Gorehounds. So. That one's definitely for Gorehounds. Yes. That part where he's just carving up at the end. Obviously oh, he's dead already. I said it's like, it's like making it, meat out of him. And, you know. Oh, that final scene. I mean, yeah. how he had to drug him up. Like, he actually went to the drugstore to get so many drugs yeah. just so he didn't feel how bad bad it was you know it's like man, i like the beginning of that movie up. too because it has like all the you know the ed gein and the oh absolutely elber uh, fish all the cannibalism yep. shit that he's into mm -hmm. pretty cool lucifer valentine's black metal veins a little different but absolutely this is a great um almost kind of done on a documentary style um the uh, negative effects of black metal um when you throw drugs in the mix and also uh, sex um, definitely more or less drugs, like, just fuck these people up. And they're into black metal, they have black, they play black metal. Mm -hmm. But, um, <laughs> black metal never made us do this, okay? <laughs> yeah. But oh. man, this movie is badass, you gotta check it out. This isn't the director's cut, I don't think. I think there's a director's cut, but I don't really know how more they could fucking add. This movie just delivers. Definitely more vomit gore as well, mixed with a really good soundtrack, black metal soundtrack. Mm. If you're a fan of the that type black of music, metal, such as we are, which we'll get into later, you're gonna love this, man. Check out Black Metal Vans, Mr. Valentine. One that ends up on the on the cheap end of things. I've never Frankenstein's seen that. Bloody Nightmare. I've never seen that one. Um, this this is kind of like Pieces meets Reanimator. Oh, um, look at it already. It's this doctor. This brilliant. He's actually he's not deranged or anything. He's actually quite brilliant. Um, a woman that he really likes dies, and, um, in this facility, and he's just, like, he, he's so infatuated with her, he wants to keep her alive, so he wants to, like, mechanically create her, like, re reanimate her that way, and so he murders young women to get body parts to keep her alive, um, it's a, it, I think what it gets a lot of shit for is because of how it's shot. It's a very, it's an 8mm type style film. Here's it. Uh, 2006. Oh. John Hand did this one. Um, but I think it's because of how it's shot. It's a very grainy 8-bit eight, eight film, or 8, the Super 8, sorry, cinematography. Um, but it's the first movie by John Hand. I I haven't looked into what else he has, but... i never heard of him. You can pick this one up for, I mean, five bucks. I mean, it's definitely cool to add to your collection. I like the movie. It's actually... It's not so bad. Yeah. So. All right, guys. We're going to come back. First, we're going to roll another Unearth Films trailer. Yeah. Later. Cheers. Do the pants with the shears. 
wasn't that beautiful. Uh, we all loved on our films and love the trailers for these movies. Should, uh, check the them kills out. are even better, so check them out. Link um, below. We're gonna get into some cy Japanese cyberpunk. Um, Rubber's Lover. This is a weird one. Um, this is kind of this is kind of a, a film of basically how much can the human mind take. Um, this doctor is he runs this facility that deals with this um, this digital direct drive or DDD that he puts these people to drug that he put, he he puts his people under and he exposes them to like high frequency sounds and all this weird stuff and it ends up becoming fatal um, and they want to shut it down but he refuses to shut down this plan. Um, Shot in black and white. Um, Cyberpunk. But it's 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 kind of cool because it it's it kind of like that Pinocchio one that uh, that nine. Yeah, that yeah. I know that was another um, film. But it's like the, you know the the scientists that are left over like people are dressed up in these like latex suits and like it's it's a weird movie and that's why I think where that cyberpunk you know I never really got into cyberpunk all too much. Um, but it's just, it's weird what, you know, what they kind of put these people through, and it, it's a weird movie, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. but, I'll have to check that one out, I never saw Rivers Lover. I saw that Pinocchio one, though, that other one we were talking about. Uh, I don't own it, but I did see it, and that one was definitely cyberpunk personified. Oh, yes. That was a cool one. Brain Jacked. Um, Steven Byro himself, the man of Unearth Films, actually go. does a cameo in this one. I think he plays like a drunken father that like beats his kid or some shit. I believe, yeah. Never so seen it. pretty good. That one this dude drills it. holes in people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> this movie will give you a headache, brain jacked. <laughs> Alright, we're moving on to the sequel to Red Room, Red Room 2. Oh yeah. Um, again, same concept, group of strangers is... Locked in a room, don't know what's going on. They play they this makes, card game. You should make more of those Red Room movies. Um, but there's this one woman who, like... It, there's a surprise ending I'm not going to tell you about. No. Um, far different from the first one, but a lot of the same kind of concepts. Um, kind of gross out things. Um, makes them eat, like, regurgitated food. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty screwed up. Yeah. Um, but definitely, check out these Red Room 1 and 2. Can't go wrong. They're, they're just kind of good, fun... Um, I don't say they're exactly fun, but for the extreme audience, it's almost like it's like, like Russian. It's like playing Russian roulette. Like you just <laughs> you're gonna get if you don't win to become the king. Like you are summoned to some weird torture. It's it's something else. Oh shit! Oh, here's Phil Stevens. Sorry, clown. There flowers. it is. Flowers. There it is. Yeah, we had Long Long Two before. This is Flowers. This is his first one. Uh, my opinion is my his oh, best. This one's actually movie. in color as well. It's yeah, a really grainy a color too. Like it's a decayed. It's like a sepia kind of. It's tone. really. Yeah. It almost is made like a music video in a way. It's like really. Dark. Like a Nine Inch Nails video or something. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it kind of has that type of mentality yeah. to it. Really, yeah. it's just. I really enjoyed this one. Um, really, really disturbing subject matter to begin with. That the story about it is. It's kind of complex to tell. You just kind of have to, have to see it. And definitely mm. watch it with commentary from Steve so you know more about it as well. I would watch it without it first and then get an understanding and then watch it. That's kind of again. what I did with the Vomit yeah. Gore trilogy too, but then when I watched yeah. it with the with the commentary. Because you'll under you'll understand it, but you kind of you know what's coming. It's the same, I think, for this yeah. one. But that 3-disc definitely is a cool yeah, version. This is a badass that. version to get on a Nerf film. Absolutely. Definitely check out Phil Stevens' Flowers. All right, now we talked about the, the Vomit Gore trilogy, <clears throat> but we're going to... This set that came out for Unearth Films um, features a fourth short film um, called The Devil's Perfect Child or Perfect Child of Satan. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say much about it because it is a short film, so you can give it away pretty easily. Um, but as far as I know, that's the only way you can get it. I don't think it was released individually. Um, so again, you can buy the the big Mama Jamma, you know, fold out one. Oh, yeah. um, that's got that fourth one. So definitely check out. Uh, a perfect child of Satan in that Vomigor trilogy, trilogy box. Ichi One, prequel to Ichi the Killer. Now, um, Takam to Takamishi Takashimike's Ichi the Killer is a classic uh, oh, yes. Asian horror film action based on a comic book, you know, just splatter kung, kung fu thrown in there, martial mm -hmm. arts. It's kind of like the Legend of Rikkyo kind of. Yeah, idea it, it, where it's... it pretty much was inspired by that, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
This is a really good one. It's a prequel. You can kind of see how he became Itchy the Killer. You know, how he's mm. bullied as a kid. How he tried to take karate to learn more. Um, he's got this thing where he's got this rage in him when someone makes him cry. If <laughs> yeah. somebody... He's pretty much like a loser, honestly. Like, he doesn't... He's picked on. He's yeah, picked on, sure. you know. He's, he's definitely an outcast. But... He has a power within him that he doesn't understand, but when he gets pissed off, especially when he fucking starts crying, he turns to fucking Chuck Norris times ten, man, and he just fucking <laughs> oh, love beats it. the shit out of everybody. And this one actually makes each of the killer, the other one, actually make a little bit more sense. It does. It does. It really does. Because oh. if you watch this one before, Ichi the Killer, yeah. Takashi Miike's Ichi the Killer, he really explains more. You'll and of course, in it. Ichi the Killer... Um, he puts those blades on his, on his the ends of his shoes, and of yeah. course he can slip through it. And guys, yep. there's a blood and shit. The tongue. But you can kind well, of that see first, that was the, how he became that killer, but. type of superhero from this one. All right, we got one Eric, Eric Felladero. Oh. Fela, Fela Deal. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Thana, how the hell do you say Thantia this? Thantia Morpheus. That's it. There you go. The really yeah. long titled one, as most people call it. Um, this movie is, it's a, um, the French meaning for, what is it, uh, organisms decomposition. It's, and it is just that. Yeah. Um, this basically, this girl con contracts this skin disorder where throughout the film she just Curious. gradually just starts getting decayed and she can't figure out why. She's got her asshole boyfriend um, abusive. And it's just... It's so well done, and I think it's the advancement of, like, special effects, you know. It's, you know, it's just a little blemish here and there. She starts to notice it covered up with makeup, and next thing you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, she can rip off skin. It starts off on her shoulder, else. and it yeah. just, like, comes over. So, definitely one of those movies that, slow burner, but when it, at the end, you won't want to miss it. So, definitely just bear with it. And I think it actually is, it's intriguing, it keeps you with it because of the fact that you know something There's not a lot of happen. dialogue in that movie no. either, except the party scene when yeah. they're in the party, you know, and then when she's bitching at her fucking boyfriend because yeah, he's course. an abusive asshole, yeah. or she's having sex, it's a sex scene or whatever, sex scene. you know, yeah. but otherwise it's just, a lot of it's music, symphonic music, that get, you know, that's, that's fucking yeah. awesome, man. So, it's just great all around, great movie. There's a scene in that fucking movie that just... <laughs> Unbelievable, like, like he said, it's a slow burn right yes. up until she starts literally rotting. Oh, yeah. But there's a scene in that movie at the end that just has to be seen to be believed, and I had to watch it many times to just get the full effect oh, yeah. that you didn't get already, man. It was just amazing. Great also, a host core horror film festival by Philip H. and Samo and Corey Mitchell screened that amazing. film, and it got many awards, oh, rightfully sure. so. Yeah. That's kind of how I heard about it, really. It was through interviews with and them. And thank you, Unearth, for releasing that as yeah. well. So That was a real treat, guys. Check out the Antiomorphos. All right, and finally, our number one pick. Um, these never went really in any specific order. No, but, but these are our personal favorite <laughs> Unearth film Release. releases. Release, and we yes. both love each other's films, just so you know. So not Release. one is better than the other. And I think if you've watched this, you know pretty much what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> you haven't seen him yet, so... Anyone who knows me knows that. Oh, Bouquet of Guts yes. and Gore. Man, <sighs> the greatest date movie ever. This I mean, is you throw a chick this movie, and if she's still around after the movie's done, you know we got a good woman. I did, but she shut her eyes during a few parts. She's not a fan <laughs> of cutting eyes and <laughs> things cool. like that, yeah. You know. <laughs> this movie! She wanted to see the most extreme movie I had. Well, there you go. <laughs> Look it, no so. further than this, or Tumbling Dolls of Flesh, or whatever. But this, I played it. <laughs> this, this, this movie... I say this so many goddamn times, but I gotta say it here because it's important, okay? For sheer gore, for disturbing gore, I'm not talking about Peter Jackson, dead, over uh, the top, dead alive, dead, dead alive, bad like taste that, type yeah. stuff. I'm talking for truly disturbing, gory images. Someone just being on a slab and getting fucking mutilated yep. by a psycho and a fucking badass devil mask. Yep. Played by well, the Chosen One. It's like a skull, yeah. It's played by the Chosen One as well. Also, um,. Some of the goriest shit you'll ever see. Oh, Marcus man. Cook is the gore guru of our yes. generation. He's the top of our era. School. Absolutely. Yeah, we said that many times in the yes. past. And this was on our gore episode. We did talk about this. This was on so many fucking episodes. You guys are probably sick of hearing it, but yeah. we had had. I had to save this one because this is my personal favorite mm. uh, el uh, album. The release that Stephen 
ever released, and he himself directed this film. He's the yes. creator of this fucking yes. film. This was the one so that really put Stephen a, Byer. This is the one that put American guinea pig on the map for sure. Absolutely. But let's not go forget. save one of the best for last. Let's not forget the <laughs> Charlie the, Sheen's favorite movie. Yes. <laughs> Flower of Flesh and Blood, the OG um, oh, yeah. film. Um, Charlie Sheen. This, so this magna artist receives these, this parcel in the mail of letters and films of these crimes and this w helpless woman getting mutilated and murdered. Um, and that's really all it is. Dude, I mean, in a samurai fucking helmet. <laughs> yeah, with a sword. I mean, the over-the-top gore which is awesome but the slow motion shots the way it's shot the grittiness how all the different colors when he's about to viscerate oh, like the like green blue green, white right whatever. it's yeah. like those lenses they put over i mean yeah. this it, this is just an over the top masterpiece i mean this yeah. is really yes. what people recognize so thank you under the films for releasing that one that was definitely... Alright guys, that was our unearthing of Unearthed Films. Um, Want to make a point though, um, Unearthed Films also has a lot of great other work coming out. Purgatory Road. Purgatory Road you can pick up on their website. Now you can get it, I know, it's, I think it's signed by the director, yeah. I believe. Um, what is it, Dis? Three or whatever, there's however a lot. you pronounce it. I mean, there's a lot um, we didn't even cover. There are some other ones that, yes, we do Hollow not Sacrament, have. Uh, Mercy... Fuck, there's so many. So you guys do yourself a favor. Um, check out unearthfilms.com. Absolutely. Check them out. You can get Stephen Byro's books. You can get <clears throat> CDs. Uh, I mean, audio tracks from these movies. Um, if you're a fan of gore, Unearth Films is definitely where it's at. One of the top-notch fucking horror companies for sure. So we're going to go on to our last uh, clip, I guess. And uh, we'll see you guys back here on the set in Horror Hell. Cheers. Absolutely.